Imagine our world ravaged by hurricane force winds. With temperatures swinging from scorching heat to freezing cold. Imagine the day lasting just six hours on a world where only primitive life forms evolve. This could be our planet if the Earth had no moon. The moon, an 81 million billion ton lump of rock and dust, more than 2,100 miles in diameter, orbiting almost a quarter of a million miles above our heads. It is the second brightest object in our skies, with temperatures ranging from 250 degrees down to minus 380 degrees and lower. Its gravity is a sixth of that of Earth, Mountains soar to 16,000 feet, and millions of craters litter the dust-dry surface, where no liquid water has ever been found. This is not a hospitable place. And yet, we associate the moon with romance and mystery. The man in the moon enraptures lovers all over the world and feeds our hunger for supernatural myths and legends. We are far from alone in having a moon. There are at least 135 other moons orbiting the planets in our solar system. Saturn has the most with 46. While we have at least 10 mysterious bodies orbiting our planet, five are asteroids caught temporarily by the Earth's gravitational field, and four are probably remnants of the Apollo 12 rocket. The 10th and largest is our moon. Since long before the birth of humankind, the moon has been the Earth's constant companion. But until relatively recently, we've known little of its true nature, or even how it was created. There are several competing theories. One suggests that the moon is merely an asteroid or planet trapped by the Earth's gravity. Another ascribes the creation to a giant impact on Earth, ejecting masses of material that formed the moon. Clues as to which theory is more likely to be correct came when men first landed on the moon and started unlocking the secrets of creation buried within the lunar rocks. Five, four, three, two, one. Zero, off. Step off the land now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Between 1969 and 1972, six missions blasted off to the moon. Wow, what a flight! What a view, isn't it, John? It's absolutely unreal. Only 12 humans have ever walked on the moon. But these astronauts did more than just rewrite history. They also returned with samples of lunar rock. These moon rocks are amazingly similar to Earth rocks, but they contain far less iron. This seemingly small difference offers a huge clue as to how the moon was created. It shows that the moon started with a bang. Let's step back four and a half billion years in Earth's history. The moon does not yet exist. The inner solar system has about twice as many planets as the four that exist today. Many of them are on a crash course to destruction. Among them is a planet about half the size of Earth since named Thea, who in Greek mythology was the goddess mother of the moon. The two bodies are on a collision course. Inexorably, Thea rushes closer and closer to Earth.
approaching planet is a terrifying sight. Astrophysicist Jeff Taylor studies the moon's fiery birth. He describes the view from Earth as Thea races toward it. It might have started looking like a star or a pretty big star, but then as it got closer and closer, this thing would get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it just filled the sky moments before the big impact. And then everything would be, would be gone for you as a witness and there would be a giant flash because everything would be white hot. And if you were standing, or a friend of yours, on the other side of the Earth, they would see the flash in the atmosphere and, and feel gigantic earthquakes passing through the Earth. Thea is 4,000 miles in diameter. To put its size in perspective, the meteorite thought to have wiped out the dinosaurs was about six miles across. Thea is traveling at 25,000 miles per hour. That's about 20 times faster than a supersonic jet. This is an object that is the size of Mars, which is about half of the Earth's diameter. So it's a gigantic event of unimaginable power. As the planets get closer, their immense gravitational fields rip each other's outer layers to pieces. Then, they catastrophically collide. The impact is equivalent to billions of megaton bombs. The impact shears off continent-sized sections of the Earth's crust, blasting surface rocks out into space. These surface rocks contain only a small amount of iron. The atmosphere around the molten planet is filled with rock vapor. Earth's gravity pulls back most of the debris, but some is catapulted into space, although it cannot escape completely. Instead, it is trapped by the Earth's gravity, forming a ring of red-hot dust and rock around the planet. In a process called accretion, the circling dust and rocks collide and fuse with other fragments to create larger blocks. We can represent this process by olive oil and water. The water here represents the space around the Earth and the olive oil is the d debris thrown around the Earth by this giant impact. And each little droplet that we pour in here represents a given chunk of matter thrown up, blasted off the Earth. We're going to stir this around, indicating the way the debris is being moved around the Earth. But when Taylor stops stirring, the drops bump into each other and clump together as bigger droplets. And that process of small things bumping into each other, becoming larger, is called accretion. And that's how the moon formed around the Earth. That's how the Earth formed around the sun. As the debris clumps together, its combined gravity becomes strong enough to attract even more debris. This chain reaction doesn't stop until the billions of fragments of vaporized rock have gathered into one red-hot ball of matter. In less than 100 years, this cools into a solid lump of rock, one fiftieth the volume of Earth. It becomes the moon. When the moon forms, it is just 17,000 miles away, but it doesn't stay as close as that. Its violent birth sets it spinning away from us on a journey that will last for 10 billion years. Absolute proof that the moon is moving away comes in 1969, when astronauts leave an 18-inch reflective plate on the moon's surface. By bouncing lasers off this plate, scientists can pinpoint the moon's distance from Earth to within an inch. Such calculations reveal that the moon is moving away from Earth at a rate of about 1.5 inches per year. So why is the moon on the move? In the 1990s, 
supercomputers gave scientists a more accurate picture of what happened 4.5 billion years ago. Computer models of the creation impact reveal that the collision of Thea and Earth is a glancing blow. It imparts a rotational force to the Earth. This rotation gives Earth its days and nights. But the huge power of the collision sets the Earth spinning far faster than the Moon, which orbits around it. In these early days, Earth spins once every six hours, four times faster than today, whereas the Moon takes 20 days to complete one orbit. So the Moon orbits more slowly than the Earth spins. However, the early Moon is 15 times closer than today, which makes the effect of its gravity so strong that, as this graphic demonstrates, it pulls up a bulge on the Earth's surface directly below it. This bulge moves like a tide across the Earth's surface with its own gravity tugging on the Moon. Because the Earth spins faster than its satellite, the bulge is always ahead of the Moon. So it constantly pulls the Moon forward, causing it to accelerate. Any object that travels in a circular motion will move outwards as it accelerates, much like a hammer being thrown in the Olympics. As the Moon accelerates in its orbit, it starts to spiral away from Earth. It's a journey that will continue for billions of years. At the time of its birth, the Moon orbits Earth 15 times more closely than today. But this close proximity puts the Moon in great jeopardy. It faces a bombardment by thousands of asteroids, which will destroy 80% of its surface. It is now four billion years ago, a time the scientists call four giga years ago, or GYA. The moon now orbits 86,000 miles away, still three times closer to the Earth than it is today. From our planet, the moon dwarfs everything in the sky. During this early period of its life, the Moon has its most profound effects on Earth. The massive collision that creates the Moon is so powerful that it knocks the Earth off balance onto an axis of 23.5 degrees. It's this tilt that gives us our spring, summer, fall, and winter. If we spun on a vertical axis, like the planet Mercury, seasons would not exist. Everywhere would receive 12 hours of light and 12 hours of darkness. The poles would be entombed in an eternal freezing twilight, while the equator would bake in endless heat. But the moon does more than merely produce this tilt. It also maintains it. The strong gravitational pull of our young moon acts as a global gyroscope stabilizing the Earth's axis. Astrobiologist Lynn Rothschild explains. The reason we have this obliquity that holds steady is because the moon helps to stabilize the obliquity of the Earth. If we had no moon, we would end up with what the astronomers call a chaotic obliquity. We'd have quite a big shift and fairly low time scales. Without our global stabilizer, our axis could vary between zero and 90 degrees. This would alter the distribution of sunlight across the surface of the planet, devastating our finely balanced weather systems. Climate patterns would go.